I think we are at the very beginning of smart computing. And, uh, you know, every, this is a recurring question, and I'm in IDF for more than 10 years now, uh, and I was doing interviews beforehand, and every time people say, no one needs more performance, no one needs more capabilities, it's the end of the market. And human interaction with machines is at the very early beginning. You know, nothing in voice recognition anywhere near to the level of understanding uh, you and I having in a conversation, uh, let alone understanding uh, gestures and facial gestures. Uh, we have a lot of information uh, coming out from this, uh, let alone getting more capabilities of the computer to be much more able to predict what you need. And this is nowhere near to where things could be done. The computer does not give me the right address on my GPS knowing that I'm my next meeting on my calendar is on others' debt. I have to do it all myself and click here and click there. It's way better than it was done five years ago, but not anywhere near of what computers could do to you to help you with your day in life. People like to talk about experience, but we all know that experience is enabled by performance. Voice recognition, the better performance you have, the better you are. Uh, gesture recognition, the better performance you have, the better you are. Uh, graphics capabilities, uh, the better performance you have, the better you are. For the regular consumer, they don't look at that as a performance, they look at that at uh, interaction time, how good things are, how good they feel about this one, how accurate is the recognition of their interaction with the machine, but it's all about performance, our ability to put all these capabilities in the future technology will help us to do even better is extremely exciting to me because it means that the wall is way farther out. We have kind of uh, bringing the experts from both worlds of high performance computing to extremely low power, low cost, high integration and uh, having these people sitting around the same table helps a lot. In order to get a real optimization, you have a multiple power performance points. And as long as you want to keep the core capabilities, uh, the great performance, great features, there's uh, always a limit on, on cost and power, how much you can take it down. And there's always a limitation if you want to keep extreme low cost uh, and extreme low power, how much you could move it up the performance. So there's going to be potential some overlap which is always good and the right product plan but if you look at that as I want to do it as a consistent s solutions uh, that are going to deliver the same capability you run the same software on top of it while preserving our way to optimize cost performance and power and different users would want different things so it's not decommitting it's helping us to keep it consistent and have a multiple points which is going to run a bit away a bit to the business and what consumers really want. I want to make sure that we keep both product lines nevertheless being consistent from software perspective so we could really maintain if you really want the high performance you compromise some of the uh, tablets thickness lightness if you really want uh, the light uh, low power side of it, then of course you'll give up some of the performance. As long as you could run same application, same capability. Uh, we already have our 40 nanometer in extremely advanced stages of the design. Uh, we are holding our schedule to put our first product on 40 nanometer in production later next year, and we're going to launch a product in 14. Uh, we'll launch many products in 14. The first product is going to be in early 14 and uh, our 10 nanometer plans are advancing. So we believe that we'll grow the gap and it's going to give us a more advantage on top of many other things that I've talked about today. Mm -hmm.